Hey everybody, Steve here with RV Site Design. I appreciate you tuning in today. I'm recording today from my office at home. The 12 volt refrigerator on uh, my rig went out and so it's at the dealership right now being repaired. And I'll talk about that in another video. My Grand Design Reflection 337 RLS came with inverter prep. And now I'm going to be honest with you, a few months ago, I wasn't sure what the difference was between an inverter and a converter. Then, inverter prep. After searching around on the internet, I found out that I was not the only one who was confused about that. So, on the paperwork for my unit, which is a 2024 model, it boasted a 370-watt solar panel on top. Well, that was great. Uh, however, the dealer put a measly 60-amp-hour marine-type battery in it, which is fine, but certainly doesn't compare to the lithium batteries that are available right now. And so my first order of business was to remove the deep cycle battery and replace it with two 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries. And I won't get into it now, but my converter, which is an IntelliPower PD9360, happens to be one that can be switched to change to lithium type batteries. So you'd have to look that up. Because understanding what the whole concept is so important, I want to break this process up into two, maybe three videos. And once you understand it, it's really a great feature. And first, if your unit is inverter prepped, there are a couple of telltale signs. First, somewhere in one of the storage bays, you will probably see this sign, inverter prep. Uh, break, and the breaker panel will probably have two breakers labeled inverter prep. In this case, the breaker panel is broken into two sections. Inverter prep breaker is one in the first section, along with the air conditioner, fireplace, uh, washer, receptacle, dryer receptacle, and, and so forth. The second section is also marked inverter prep, and it's fed by a loop of 10-gauge orange Romex wire that runs from the breaker 1 through the unit to the storage bay and looped back to breaker 2, which feeds the microwave, the GFCI receptacles, and general, whatever that is. So, in order for this to be a working system, you'll need to install an inverter, an automatic transfer switch, some heavy-duty cables, and a large fuse, in my case, 250 amps. The inverter changes the 12 volts DC to 110 volts AC, so it's pretty simple. However, the automatic transfer switch is a little bit more involved. It usually has three connections, incoming shore power, incoming generator power, and outgoing power, which is usually labeled load, uh, and this is uh, from one of the other, depending on the relay. Yep, that's where it gets a little bit complicated. Technically, when the relay is at rest, it is a closed connection between the incoming shore power and the outgoing power, which, as I said, marked load. And when you lose shore power, uh, obviously you have no current flowing out of the relay. So you crank up the generator in approximately 20 seconds, and it, which allows the generator to stabilize. The power on the generator connection energizes the relay, and now you have a direct connection between the generator connection and the outgoing power or the load connection. Uh, and here's why I changed the way that I hooked it up. Now, please understand, I am not an electrician, nor do I claim to be an expert on any of this stuff. This video is simply for entertainment purposes and just showing you the way that I did it. So here's what I did. Because I'm installing an inverter and not a generator, I don't want the relay pulling power from my batteries when I'm in that mode. So I would rather have the shore power energizing the relay than the inverter. Now let's look at this process. First, it is absolutely necessary to remove all power an I unplugged shore power, turn the switch off from the solar panels to uh, turn them to off, and disconnected the batteries. And I also turned both breakers marked inverter prep off. And once I located the orange loop, and mine came from the bottom of the front storage bay through a great big black plastic conduit, and the orange loop was hidden up to the top rails, and I pulled it out, making it accessible. And then I want to warn you, making sure that there's absolutely no power to the unit, I cut this loop in two. I stripped away the wires, and there should be a black wire that carries the 110 volts, the white, 
which is the neutral, and a bare copper wire, which is the ground. Now that you have the two orange cables with about a half inch of wire exposed on each of the wires, you'll need to use a multimeter or voltmeter to find which is carrying the live 110 volts from the first breaker. Obviously, you'll have to reconnect shore power and turn both inverter prep breakers on to do that. Now, please be careful. These live wires can literally kill you. And once you determine which wire is live, you now know that the other orange wire feeds back to breaker two. And again, turn off all power and the two breakers, and I labeled mine to know which was which. And because I wanted to energize the relay with the incoming shore power, breaker one, I connected the wires coming from that breaker uh, to the generator connection. And then the load would be wired to the orange wire going back to breaker two. Now, when the shore power is on, it energizes the breaker and makes the connection complete from the incoming shore power, uh, which is actually the generator connection, to the load. And finally, I connected the outgoing power from the inverter to the shore power connection, which means when there is no shore power, the relay is at rest and making a connection between the inverter and the load. And that way, the relay is not draining power from the inverter and thus drawing power from my batteries. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then uh, the hot orange Romex wire line would be connected to the shore power. The other orange Romex line would be connected to the load and the inverter would be connected to the one mark generator. So I'll put some links below for the inverter and automatic transfer switch that I used. And I think I'll stop at this point. It's a, a lot to absorb. In part two, I'll discuss hooking up the inverter to the batteries. And so please be watching for that. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Click that bell icon if you would like to be a notified, like to be notified when I post another video. And if this video was any help to you, please give it a thumbs up. And the comments are always appreciated. So until the next time, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let it go.